The wildflowers of Crested Butte, Colorado are a perennial favorite, truly a summer spectacular. I think a piece of hail just hit me, <laughs> but that's part of the experience. I think we do have a little hail hitting us. Painting out in the wild doesn't always go as planned, but if your models are wildflowers, well, you don't have much of a choice. I guess if you weren't here, I'd probably be running for the car. Hmm, <laughs> it's hail. Nicholas Reddy and his brushes have been braving the elements here in Crested Butte, Colorado for more than a decade. These uh, beautiful blues are the flax. Capturing the bright bursts of color exploding around this small town nestled high up in the Rockies. This is Mount Crested Butte, the mother rock that looks down over all of town. Reddy, who owns the downtown gallery Oh Be Joyful, starts with a sketch before committing to his canvas. I'm never trying to make a, a finished masterpiece out here. I'm more exploring, trying to enjoy being outside. Today's subjects, these lavender lupins. Are they peeking now? Because they look beautiful. Yeah, the lupin, almost every single stock has a flower on it right now. Every year, winter snow gives way to summer's spectacular quilt that at its peak blankets the hills and valleys as far as the eye can see, earning Crested Butte the distinction of Colorado's wildflower capital. No repeat performances here. Every year is different. Since 1986, the former mining town has celebrated its blooms each July with a week-long festival for hikers, bikers, pedal peepers, and art enthusiasts. This image was inspired by a high country view in about the first week in August. One of Nicholas Reddy's paintings is the official poster for this year's festival. Is this your first time painting This is my first time painting it. It makes me that much closer to becoming a local, you know, <laughs> after 12 years. Come on over, guys. Former festival chairman Rick Reves is one of the state's foremost wildflower experts. Scarlet gilia, it's a plant named after a Italian clergyman. He's also an interpretive guide at the nearby Rocky Mountain Biological Laboratory, where for more than half a century, researchers have been collecting data on the local buds. Blue flax, oh my gosh, guys. During the festival, Revis leads hikes for flower fanatics from as far away as New Zealand, who marvel over some 1,500 species. With the presence of Indian paintbrush, there's uh, more diversity of other plants. Okay. Can I also say something? Oh, yeah. Indian paintbrush is the state flower of Wyoming. Yes. Okay. Some names are as fanciful as the flowers themselves, from elephant's head and sky pilot to shooting star. Isn't there one called sneezeweed? Sneezeweed, yes. The sneezeweed plant was used by miners. They would make a snuff. They would <laughs> snort the snuff to expel dust from coal. But don't even think about snorting or swiping sneezeweed. Picking wildflowers on public land is strictly prohibited. You're not coming here to pick and no take No picking flowers, no, and stay on the trails. The stunning variety of wildflowers is the byproduct of the area's isolation, a slow rate of snow melt, and a nutrient-rich soil that together produce... Wait, is that a weed? Dutch clover, white Dutch clover. Daylion right there. Let's settle this. The, da <laughs> the dandelion. Yes. Is it a wildflower or a weed? Um, a little bit of both. Dandelions aren't native to the area. That's partly what makes them weeds, but they serve an important function. That flower serves as a food source for species of bees, and that's very important. Those bees have been just as helpful in keeping the wildflowers flourishing as coal once was to keeping Crested Butte's economy thriving. We didn't have much gold. We have a few veins of silver. So during the gold rush, many of the people that came out went on and continued on to California. Local historian Glo Cunningham says coal was king starting in the 1880s. But when the town's big mine closed in 1952, most of the 1,500 residents were left jobless. And that's when we went down to about 150 to 200 people in town. 
The ski resort opened in the early 60s, but Cunningham, who has been here since 1975, says wildflowers helped make the town a summer destination. I find it very magical here. Yeah. Every year. I still wake up every morning and go, whoa, look where I live. So that's the columbine. And the state flower actually is the one through the fence. Ah, the blue that's one. the light bluish mm -hmm. one. Cunningham leads tours of gardens right in town. Some people can't hike 2,000 right. feet up to Hazley Basin. Some people can walk a long way and some people can't. Some people can. Yeah. And I've had people in wheelchairs. Yeah. I love it. That love is apparent all season long. From the spring's first glacier lily to the fall's last fireweed. The fireweed is so beautiful. It's bittersweet because you know winter's coming soon. Winter promises to bring plenty of snow, which will yield yet another season of wondrous wildflowers. Nicholas Reddy will be waiting. Is it hard to see them go each year? Oh, it's terribly sad. So snow's coming. Right. <laughs> Got to paint fast. Got to paint fast.